Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. De Ganji, uh reporting for The Media Speaks. For those of you that don't know, uh, I just did it again. I've had people say that I look like I have a blank stare before I hit record. I'm not doing like a Bill Clinton zone out, although maybe that's in fact why he did it. I'm usually looking at one camera and waiting for the other one to cue in. So no, I'm not a robot. I'm not the one turns the crank. It's me. And uh, we're off to the new show, as it were. Uh, needless to say, H def, I'm pointing at you. Lower def, I'm pointing at you. High def goes on the media speaks. So the uh, lower def webcam is for my live viewers. Uh, RT.com, U.S. corn exports to China drop 85% after ban on GMO strains, industry report. I was not unhappy to hear this. Uh, there's one part in it that I'm unhappy about. Uh, I was... China's actually right about something. Uh, it, it's rather amazing. We also, uh, later on in the show, have Donald Trump right about something. Uh, to, to find that in one uh, news day was amazing to me. Uh, the China thing's funny because they have some of the worst food production in the, the, the civilized world. Um, they just had a massive die-off of pigs. There were all these swine, like, just dead floating down this lake poisoning people. For China to say that something is too dangerous for its country. Uh, that's like Lemmy from Motorhead saying that the stereo is too loud. When it's that obvious that it's bad. I mean, there should be a warning bell sounding everywhere. The the country that forces women to have abortions sometimes in their own living rooms as the police watch is the nation that's afraid of these GMOs. Does that tell you anything? It says China's rejection of shipments of U.S. corn containing traces of unapproved genetically modified maize has caused a significant drop in exports. According to a new report, U.S. traders have lost $427 million in sales. Good! They'll get our country out of them. Overall, China has barred nearly 1.45 million tons of corn maize and corn shipments since last year. The National Grain and Feed Association, oh, they put that out. It's an American Industry Association, and they released it Friday. The tally is based on data from export companies and is significantly higher than the previous numbers reported by the media which said that roughly 900,000 tons were affected. Well, they lied just a little bit to keep that down now, didn't they? U.S. corn exports to China since January are down 85% from the period last year, the report says. You want to know how else to fight this? If you're in a mutual fund and uh, Monsanto is in it, pull out of it. That'll hurt them too. China has been blocking shipments of American corn from its markets since November. This was caused by the presence of MIR-162, genetically modified corn strain, in the shipments. It was developed by the company Syngenta and has not been approved by Chinese government since an application was submitted in March of 2010. And if they're smart, they won't. China has sharply increased corn exports since the 2000s, with purchases increasing from 47,000 tons in 08 to an estimated 5 million tons last year. It's gone up almost as much as our welfare system has under Obama. It was the third largest importer of American corn before the imports of Sagenta's GMO strain were blocked. U.S. traders want seed companies to shoulder the losses. They also say seed companies should not introduce new varieties of seeds to farmers until they are approved by major markets, including China. How about not any GMOs at all? Part of the ire is falling on the Chinese government. Who cares? One of the most dogmatic, nasty regimes in the world. It says they're falling on the Chinese government, which traders say maintains an opaque process of approving and rejecting GMO strains, an accusation that Beijing rejects. So they do okay some of this poison in there. But that's, that, that's the part of the story I told you I didn't like. That's just China in action. This, that's what that messed up nation does. You kind of have to go to North Korea to find a nation more messed up than China. China has so far approved 15 genetically modified corn strains for import. That means 17 different kinds of cancer causers. Friends, uh, theamericanthinker.com. Nightmare 
fed seizing money from children of old deaths of their parents. I'm going to give you the story, then I'm going to give you a real nice, correct view. You'll be happy that you tuned in on this if uh, this is something that interests you. There's a way out of this. In a case that is a perfect storm illustration of an arbitrary and incompetent federal government running roughshod over its citizens, a single sentence tucked into the Farm Bill, and there's uh, links to that, had led to outrageous behavior. Mark Fisher of the Washington Post writes, A few weeks ago, with no notice, the U.S. government intercepted Mary Grace's tax refund, Grace's tax refund, from both the IRS and the state of Maryland. Grace had no idea that Uncle Sam had seized her money until some days later, when she got a letter saying that her refund had gone to satisfy an old debt to the government, a very old debt. Now, there isn't much you can do to stop that. Um, I was swindled by these student loan people. Um, in a nutshell, for those of you that want to know what happened, um, if not, just scan ahead two minutes. Um, when you take out student loans, they promise you that you're going to get these uh, pay at a certain rate at a certain time. I went through a separation that has uh, since become a divorce. And when you move and you're going through a divorce, a lot of times you don't file change of address forms. Now, I know that's my responsibility. I get it. I, completely me. However, isn't it kind of interesting that they couldn't find me to bill me? But the day that it defaulted, they sure could find me. Isn't that amazing? And then they lock you in. They want you to default so that they can literally ruin your credit forever. So they take most of my tax returns and stuff. How do you get around it? Like I said I was going to do a minute ago. I was going to tell you how to do it. The income taxes, you can't stop very much. But if you go to Blanchard.com, no, they don't sponsor the show. I'm just throwing one out there. You can buy gold with a money order. Money orders have no names attached to them. Don't invest in stocks or mutual funds because they are going to take that from you for your debts. Um, in this instance, wait till you see what it is. It's not even their debt. The way around it is to lock yourself into precious metals and uh, don't let anybody know you have them. Solved. When Grace was four, back in 1960, her father died, leaving her mother with five children to raise. Until the kids turned 18, Sadie Grace got survivor benefits from Social Security to help feed and clothe them. Now Social Security claims that it overpaid someone in the Grace family, it's not sure who, in 1977. After 37 years of silence, four years after Sadie Grace died, the government is coming after her daughter. Why the feds chose to take Mary's money rather than her surviving siblings is a mystery. Sound familiar? They can't find you when you can be settled reasonably. They can only find you when they have the best chance of hosing you because it's rigged. Mary Grace is unlucky, I guess. The feds want some money and her name popped up, not those of her siblings. Tough luck when you get on the wrong end of the government. Her plight, it says, is not unique. Across the nation, hundreds of thousands of taxpayers who are expecting refunds this month are instead going to get letters like the one Grace got, informing them that because of the debt they may never that they never may never have known about, often the debt incurred by their parents, the government has confiscated their check. And again, uh, look up Mark Dice's work on this, how they took us off the gold standard. Nixon promised us we were only going to temporarily be off the gold standard. That was in the Nixon era. Uh, the dollar has lost 99% of its value since 1912 when they started the, uh, the Fed and the IRS. Look it up. I'm not making that up. It's 414. It's going to be 415. Uh, look it up. It's tax day. You'll see that I'm right on this. The Treasury Department has intercepted $1.9 billion in tax refunds already this year. 75 million of that debt's delinquent for more than 10 years. The feds are making up their own rules. Injustice or personal responsibility are less important than the convenience of bureaucrats. Well, who would have imagined? Social Security officials told Grice that six people, Grice, her four siblings, and her father's first wife, whom she never knew, had received benefits under her father's account. The government doesn't look into exactly who got the overpayment. The policy is to seek compensation from the oldest sibling and work down through the family until the debt is paid. 
The Federal Trade Commission on its website advises Americans, it goes on, that family members typically are not obligated to pay the debts of a deceased relative for their own assets. Let's pause. But they're starting it. This is how it begins with this one exception. And then soon, we know where we're at. Continues, Social Security officials say if the children indirectly received assistance from public dollars paid to a parent, the children's money can be taken no matter how long ago the overpayment occurred. So now something, so what, if a teenager, well, they don't really do this anymore, but how many of you remember you could get like 10 CDs for a dollar and then you had to buy like so many throughout the year? Half the time you forgot and nothing had all happened because you were a kid and they shouldn't have done it anyway. Let's face it, it was more promotion. They made enough money to keep it running back in the day, and that was it. Um, you mean now they're going to go after... Do I, I don't know, do, do I owe any money for Testament CDs that I bought or cassettes that I got when I was 12? Make sure you let me know, pricks. It doesn't even matter if the parents took the money and went on a bender. The kids are stuck with the bill on the theory that they should have received the benefit, and it would be too complicated for the bureaucrats if they had to actually, you know prove that they had benefited even as an infant. So infants can now be charged when they get old for their parents' mistakes and the government's. The most important thing, after all, is that the government gets the money that it wants. And it asks if anybody in the GOP will start a crusade against this. GOP's been asleep at the wheel forever. A bunch of libertarians walking around trying to change a party that is a sinking ship. Uh, friends, Breitbart.com. Remember I told you a minute ago that uh, China was right? Well, so is Trump. Trump, I would build a border fence like you've never seen before. Thank God. Um, why do I say that? Because I hate Mexicans? No, I'm part Mexican. I say that because we are being overrun. The country is bankrupt. We can't bring any more people in. That's what happens when you go bankrupt. And the only reason we're not is because we're spending Fed dollars and uh, delaying the inevitable. Manchester, New Hampshire. Donald Trump, speaking to a gathering of conservative Americans at the New Hampshire Freedom Summit, said that not only is Obamacare a disaster, it is the single greatest lie that I have ever witnessed and I have been watching politics for a long time. Now, I know you're wondering, Sam, are you planning to vote for Donald Trump? Hell no. But, um... We can do worse, I'll say that. Trump's speech was upbeat and direct, and he didn't miss an opportunity to criticize the president or his cabinet. Trump thought that Kathleen Sibelis admitting that I am missing a sheet of paper in her stepping down speech of a chief Obamacare official on Friday will go down as one of the most memorable lines in the history of politics. The mishap is emblematic of Obamacare, he told the guests at the inaugural event and it was sponsored by the Citizens United and Americans for Prosperity, and highlighted by speeches from Trump as well as Senators Ted Cruz, Rand Paul, and Mike Lee. Out of all of those, I like Rand Paul the most. Who do I want to run? Justin Amish and Judge Napolitano. Trump perceptively used the botched speech as an example of media bias as well. He examined what if a Republican had delivered that speech after the series of gross errors and blatant incompetence that characterized Obamacare. They would have been ridiculed and made a fool of. But for Sybilis to do it, the media just looks at it as a cute incident. On the topic of the military, uh, Trump said that Obama has stripped the armed forces to levels that we haven't seen in many, many decades. According to Trump, Obama doesn't understand that the more you decimate your military and make it weak, the more apt you are to have to use it. On the other hand, the stronger that you make your military, the more likely that you will be feared. Therefore, countries will be less likely to violate your rules. You know, if we would have just minded our own business in the world, a lot of this wouldn't have happened. And you, again, you can, you can forgive the, the, the fever that was uh, prominent among many of us, to some degree, even me, after 9-11. But I mean, I'm talking about Libya. I'm talking about the Syria debacle that we were in, involved in via the UN. I'm talking about everything after Afghanistan and Iraq. We had no business in these places. And obviously, looking back, you know, it's questionable there. The real estate mogul contends that Americans should be the energy capital of the world, Trump explained. I am all for the Keystone Pipeline. I love it and it should happen. But we don't even need it. We don't need Canada's oil. Trump says we have it all here and we don't need to go anywhere for it or to import it. Thank 
God. We need to, we need more refineries. We need to drill, baby, drill. I completely agree with that. And again, not a huge Sarah Palin fan, Palin fan but we can do worse. As far as immigration is concerned, Trump boasted that he is a builder and that he likes to build things. He said that if he were in charge of America, I would build a border fence like you have never seen before. Uh, before many people listening to this jump on to the Donald Trump for president bandwagon that he's trying to start here, let's not forget some of the things that uh, he had done during the election cycle when we were all rooting for Ron Paul. Donald Trump is not really a, a wonderful choice for president. He's only looking that way because he's looked at beside people like Obama and Hillary. Friends, you're listening to, listening, 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 it's the remix, to the correct views. Um, Sam I.B. DeGange reporting for the Media Speaks, and The Correct Views is brought to you in part by the Arcadia Grill. Go to downtown Canton. Go in there, Arcadia Grill on Court Avenue. Get yourself a 151 and Coke. Tell Maria that Sam sent you and set down to the best ravioli that you have ever had. My last name is DeGange. I know a few things about ravioli. Also, look up the work of Mike McLaughlin. You can find him on Facebook. He is the writer of some of the most awesome fiction extant today. He does poetry, he's working on a vampire novel, and he's selling his stories. That's what he's doing, so that he can focus on uh, working less and you know, trying, to, trying to get his book done. Um, I don't mean working less in that regard, but it takes a lot of time to write a book. And it takes a lot of time to find a publisher. It's not easy work. So what you do is you try to get your work out there so that you can release your main works, your novels, and it's hard because people don't read in this country, because we live in possibly the stupidest country in the civilized world. So people like Mike McLaughlin, cherish them while we have them, because we have less and less writers every day. I know, I used to be one. I still write uh, nonfiction, political stuff for the media speaks, but I gave up on fiction. We don't have any readers. So let's not lose Mike. Let's uh, support him. He's excellent. Friends, designate, no, designtrend.com, NASA builds spacecraft bound for asteroid even though obama has like destroyed nasa um this is remarkable news uh, for those of you that don't know i now have the news from the science front section on the saturday edition of the media speaks tms live and it goes on set every saturday 2 p.m eastern standard time and we cover a wide variety of things and i always have at least one science story well i'm getting backed up here so i wanted to mention this NASA's planned mission to take samples from a passing asteroid and return them to Earth cleared a major technical review, allowing engineers to begin building a robotic spacecraft, officials said on Thursday. The $800 million mission, known as OSIRIS-REx, has a planned launch date of September 2016 from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida, according to Reuters. The mission's spacecraft would rendezvous with asteroid 1999 RQ-36, it's nicknamed Banu for those of us who don't want to look at that eye chart, in 2008. In 2018, excuse me. Once there, the spacecraft would carry out mapping and surveys, then use a robotic arm to collect samples for return in 2023. The mission is intended to help NASA better understand asteroids. Scientists are eager to, eager to find out what minerals and chemicals an asteroid contains. Similar asteroids crashing into early Earth are believed to have provided the organic materials and uh, water needed for life. Again, depending on, and everyone knows I'm a Christian, depending on how that's read, that's not anti-Christian. That actually seems to look exactly like the creation account uh, according to Genesis. Uh, the asteroid is currently positioned on the opposite side of the sun, it's said, but crosses the Earth's orbit every six years. This is a pioneering, pioneering effort both technologically and scientifically. Lead scientist Dante Loretta from the University of Arizona in Tucson said in a statement, a comprehensive technical assessment of the mission was undertaken by an independent review panel, clearing prime contractor Lockheed Martin Corp. Oh, they're finally building something other than things that kill us. To begin building the spacecraft, flight instruments and ground system, the company said in a press release. That's the best thing I've heard about them possibly ever. The OSIRIS-REx team has consistently demonstrated its ability to present a comprehensive mission design that meets all the requirements with the resources provided by NASA, Loretta added. NASA assigned the separate $183.5 million contract in August with United Launch Services for related flight services for OSIRIS-REx. 
United Launch Services, along with sister company United Launch Alliance, which makes which markets to the U.S. military, is a partnership of Lockheed Martin and Boeing. Again, finally building something uh, Lockheed Martin that would be that isn't that it's, you know other than war. They they're finding some way to make money that doesn't involve war, starting wars that we shouldn't be in. Parts of the spacecraft would be constructed in different areas of the U.S. from Greenbelt, Maryland to Tucson, Arizona. Oh, they haven't outsourced it. I'm, I'm happy to hear that as well. A couple more things to get to, friends. This is from Dispatch Politics. Homeland Security app, see something, send something. If you do this, you're an idiot. If you do this, you have absolutely no idea. Do you know that during World War II, as I break my set, during World War II, that Germany became the nightmare that they became because, in part because, they were encouraging people to snitch on each other. Originally, it was for instances of keeping them safe. And for anyone that knows about the Versailles Treaty, that made a lot of sense because uh, there was a lot of instability in Germany at the time. So because it made sense, they went ahead and instituted this, uh, basically, if you see something, say something campaign back then, and we all know where it went. Soon they were turning in Jews. Uh, you weren't even allowed to own, uh, if you had a music selection from an American artist, you could be sent to a concentration camp. You had vindictive uh, exes. You got an ex you hate? Good. See something, say something. You had that kind of thing going on. And the government would believe the threats, and of course we all know what happened to people in World War II. We know that this happened in uh, Mussolini's Italy. We know that this happened, uh, obviously, in biblical times. It's what led to the death of Christ. Let's do it in America. Shazam, Sparky, by Shazar Azad's hat. Ohio Homeland Security officials are asking smartphone users to see something, send something. With the release of an app, forward reports and photos of suspicious activity. I live in Ohio, and there is no way in hell. A Safer Ohio app, yeah, I want them on my phone, for both Apple and Android devices is being released shortly before the one-year anniversary of the Boston Marathon bombings on April 15th. Uh, yeah, ask, look up Edward Snowden. Let me know if you think it's a good idea. The app now available for free online, of course it's free, allows Ohioans to relay both tips and photos of questionable activity to Homeland Security analysis and examination for potential investigation. And there's a YouTube video on how the app works. I see a guy loading a van with pink hair. Call, call. It's my own gear in my own band. Officials hope Ohioans might use Safer Ohio to point out anything suspicious they spot at spring and summer events to attract large crowds. I live in the Hall of Fame city. You know what? If you people do this, you are an idiot. You're an idiot, idiot, idiot. You're signing yourself up to be spied on by the government and you're harassing innocent people who aren't doing anything wrong. The public's reporting of suspicious activity is one of the best defenses against terrorist threats. Ohio Department of Public Safety... Public Safety Director John Bourne said in a statement. Yeah, 911, what do we pay for that for? I see something suspicious. I see somebody climbing in someone's window. I'm going to text on my phone to the, to the Ohio, the Ohio Security? No. Ohio Department of Public Safety? No. I'm going to call 911. This is ridiculous. The biggest waste of money I've ever seen. The app uses privacy protection software that permits users to remain anonymous and does not track a smartphone user's location or record other personal information. However, security analysts still would be able to contact anyone reporting suspicious activity. Yeah, and if you make a mistake and they do catch you at it and they don't want to harass the person, now they know how to get a hold of you. The application includes a 911 button for emergency calls, a program for summoning a state trooper to non-emergencies, and traffic updates from the Ohio Department of Transportation. If you do that, you are adult. That is a correct view. Look up, learn something about history. Last thing I want to get to, guys, mysanantonio.com. I think that's the first time I've had them on my show. We're going to go blue, blue humor here. Okay, so if, you, if you're easily offended, shut the show off now. You're listening to the correct views. 
I'm a member of the Media Speaks. You can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. You've got five, four, three, two, one. Guys, that North Texas, they want you to drink your own piss. North Texas City awaits word on wastewater reuse. They really want you to. They're kind of roped into it. I'll give you my opinion on this at the close. It's not that long of an article. Lubbock, Texas. Wichita Falls is so far behind on rainfall that city leaders are asking state regulators for permission to use treated toilet flushes as drinking water. The North Texas city near Oklahoma border is about 34 inches behind on precipitation over the last three years. It's awaiting state regulatory approval for a system that would reuse wastewater, a small amount coming from flushes. The two lakes that serve Wichita Falls are 26% full. See, that, that is a huge problem, so I'm not going to attack Texas the way you think I'm going to for this. City leaders are also considering rare restrictions on outdoor watering for swimming pools and car washes. It's already cloud seeding to try to squeeze more out of the clouds. A West Texas water supplier garnered attention in 2011 when it began constructing a wastewater reuse plant in Big Spring that's similar to the one in Wichita, the uh, one that Wichita wants. So what is Sam's correct view on it? It's not as bad for you as the fluoride that they already put in some water. We know that. Speaking of World War II, we know they used that in concentration camps to dull people down and make them stupid and docile. It's better for you than some of the heavy metals that are already in it. If they were doing it just because the UN and Agenda 21 told them that they need to save the wild tortoise, then I probably wouldn't be in favor of it. The lake is 26% full. They're going to have to do something. I don't have a problem with it as long as one thing happens, and I don't see it in here. That's why I have a problem with it. You should be allowed to say, all right, I do not want to have the water, I don't want to pay a water bill for my house. I'm going to buy a water filtration system and, you know, collect rainwater. You should be allowed to do that. Me? I personally would drink the piss water right out of the toilet before I would drink rainwater. And that's because of Fukushima among other uh, nuclear disasters, you don't drink rainwater, people. Not unless it's, you know, end of the world kind of scenario. Friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangi are reporting for the Media Speaks. If you'd like to donate to me, like I said a minute ago, The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. Every penny you gives me goes to a better show. Um, I got a printer. I've got a brand new computer. It's, it's rocking. It's Windows 8, as new as can possibly be. And uh, I'm telling you, people, hey, the show is growing by leaps and bounds, and it's because of your help. So go to the correct views at hotmail.com. You, right there, you, donate $5, and I'll promote your favorite charity for the next month. Uh, uh, asterisk, no KKKs, no idiots, no idiots. Good night, friends. God bless.